Greetings, fellow classmates. Today, we will take a closer look at moral luck and try to make some sense of this work put forward by Thomas Nagel. So, the work Moral Luck by Thomas Nagel could be said to be a direct pushback against the ideas put forward by Immanuel Kant. A major idea in Kant's work is the notion that the will is a determining factor when it comes to measuring the moral worth of a person or his actions. Kant's proposed that a good will is good within itself, aka it's good on its own without considering the outcomes or level of efficiency. And the same could be said for a bad will. The will is considered to be one of the only things that is under our control. So in the sense that our intentions, whether them being good or bad, is the only thing that really matters when it comes to attaching moral judgment to each individual or his actions. The will is considered to be one of the only things that is under our control. It is a mechanism by which we control our own actions. So Kant believed that the moral worth of our action could be determined solely by tracing the intention. And this is despite external factors that are considered to be outside of our control. But Nagel believed that in reality, we in our everyday life adjust our moral judgment depending on the situation. And he believed we did this rightfully so. It is worth noting that Nagel notes Kant's view as a valiant attempt to address the problem of moral. More. It is worth noting that Nagel notes Kant's view as a valiant attempt to address the problem of moral responsibility. But he considers it a flawed view as it completely disregards external factors. So, moral luck. Thomas Nagel proposes the idea that we judge actions differently even when some external factors are in the mix. Nagel believed we did this rightfully so as it is understandable as there is not one standard to judge and generalize every single action or every single personality trait of each individual. So he proceeds to give us four different aspects of moral luck. Among these were resultant luck, circumstantial luck, constitutive luck, and casual luck. And I just thought to include this picture because it's cool. First up is resultant luck. Nago explains resultant luck as the way things ultimately turn out. Despite the root of the good will or the bad will. We typically judge the moral judgment of an individual based on how the events turn out. So an example of this would be two drivers. Both of them have forgotten to provide maintenance on their brake. As a result of this, one driver happens to hit a child due to his brakes failing. But in reality, it could have been either driver in the situation being that they both forgot to check the brakes. But we are only aware and apply judgment to the driver who hit the child, even though both actions of negligence were present in both drivers. So in this situation, we would offer different moral judgment based on the outcome of the situation without considering the good or bad intention. And the child being in the way of one driver could be said to be an external factor. And even though we don't realize this, we just apply judgment to it. There's other external factors involved that still determine, and rightfully so, determine the, determine the moral judgment applied to the situation. Now we move on to circumstantial luck. Nago explains circumstantial luck as luck in the scenarios an individual finds himself in. This occurs when it is out of the individual's control whether she or he faces a morally significant challenge with the meddling of external factors, of course. So an example of this would be the following. Person A and B, both trying to get their boogie on, go to a party, have a few drinks, 
but they are both aware that they drove their car to the party. So they're both aware that they have to drive back home. So this means they should take it easy on the drinking, right? Uh, Person A drives home intoxicated and ultimately receives a DUI. This is after encountering a DUI routine checkpoint. But person B does not get to drive home because their vehicle doesn't start. So they're forced to catch a ride home. So in this situation, both intentions were the same. They both knew that they had to drive home, yet they choose to drink and um, become intoxicated. Yet the only person receiving the moral judgment or um, the consequences of their actions is person A. Person A dealt with the consequences while person B was laying at home, chilling, because she because that person was spared via factors that were not under control. So that's circumstantial luck. So moving on to constitutive luck. Constitutive luck is explained by Nago as being predetermined circumstances or experiences out of an individual's control that have helped shape their personality. A simple example would be the following. A young man grew up being extens extensively bullied. And as a result of this bullying and enduring all this trauma, he vowed to never do the same and took mixed martial arts classes in order to learn how to defend himself and, you know, give a bully a little taste of their own medicines and whatnot. But as a result of these experiences, he joined martial arts. He went on to become a renounced martial artist and even becoming a champion in the UFC. So this person could be regarded as a compassionate, virtuous, successful person. But it could be argued that these attributes this person possesses would be entirely different if the bullying had not taken place during his childhood. So this is constitutive look. This is this and this aims to address the virtue of the virtues of people or when their moral judgment is praised. Yet it could be argued that those virtues and that morality was obtained due to events in the past. And finally, we have casual look. A quote that stood out to me is how one is determined by predetermined circumstances. So to my understanding, casual luck mirrors similar aspects of cause and effect, like circumstantial luck. And it, it is a little difficult to interpret, but if I had to take a wild guess, I would say casual luck has more to do with the laws of nature, the environment, culture, language, socioeconomic status. So this attempts to address the illusion of free will. So an example of this would be obtaining character traits or um, virtues or a certain sense of morality based on your culture, your socioeconomic status. Basically, it has a lot more to do with the environment, more as in actual events taking place in your life. And this is why um, you start tapping into stuff like your subconscious mind and the illusion of free will, where as in like the way a person is brought up in their environment is deeply rooted in the, their decision making and their thought process. So in a sense, free will is an illusion because you think you're making the decisions you want, but in reality, it's all a mirror of your experiences and the environment that you were brought up on. That's, that is mind blowing. So that concludes my interpretation of um, Thomas Nagel's work. And to wrap it up, I would just like to um, I would just like to really um, emphasize how how important it was for some a work like this to be put out because I feel like it addresses a lot of a lot of issues that Kant's work does not address, 